For a long time now, we've been reading and hearing in the media about bandits in northern Kenya. Uh, yesterday, I saw a, a, a concerning post. The government of Australia has uh, given a travel advisory to its citizens that they should not travel to northern Kenya. Now, this is not an issue, a recent thing. Yeah, th this, I think, since we were born, and that's a long time ago, uh, there have been stories of bandits, of attacks, cattle raids, and generally, when you go to northern Kenya and you compare it uh, to the southern part, the regions are vastly different. Uh, there is a lot of development uh, that has happened and business is happening well. But if you go to the northern part, it, it's past. And I don't think it's because of its aridness. Possibly there are other dynamics, but this is not the video that I want to discuss those di dynamics in. I want to address myself to the concerning security situation. Again, yes, I know uh, this channel normally talks about uh, things to do with, with the Bible and prophecy and so on. Uh, that's okay. You know, as an ecclesia, uh, not as a church, as a church we are a fellowship, but as an ecclesia we are a government. And uh, as being a government, one of the things that we ought to do is exchange um, uh, wisdom and, and, and tactic and strategies on what to do with the things that face us. Um, so this today I just want to take these few minutes and propose seven solutions that I believe if worked out together, uh, the government and, and the people of Kenya will be able to bring this situation a conclusion that is amicable, uh, not just to, to the security situation, but also to the population of this country that uh, resides in those regions. At one point, this is a matter that uh, I considered with other colleagues um, quite deeply. And um, now I want to just offer this uh, solution yet again through this channel. I don't feel like I'm called to, to, to visit any office. I did that many, many years ago. N let me just offer it again. And, and I pray, actually I am hoping that uh, somebody uh, listening to me will pick it. Uh, and they can add to it. I don't mind. I, I don't need to claim the solutions as my own. Uh, and, and, but what I'd, I'd love to see is for these actions being taken by government and bringing uh, a conclusive end to this trouble. So I'll offer seven solutions. So in my first point, I want to cause us to think more deeply. Where are these bandits getting firearms and ammunition from? Yeah. And I don't mean uh, who's buying them. That's an entirely other issue. Where is the supply coming from yeah, of, of this? Uh, and, and I urge, therefore, then the government uh, to consider a small arms smuggling and how to control it better. Be because if there is no supply of firearms, the situation already immediately uh, de-escalates. They, they will only have limited stock of those arms. Uh, I know the government has been putting efforts um, with, the, with the, um, the administration police, but they need to consider more, especially along our borders. Somalia, where I believe a lot of these arms may be coming from, possibly also South Sudan, because they, they've been in times of war for a long time. Uh, and I would not be shocked uh, to hear that smuggling is coming from parts of DRC where, where, where there's been fighting. Uh, I'm personally not mentioning these places uh, born out of current intelligence, but I do urge the government 
to consider uh, controlling the smuggling of small arms. So where are they coming from? How are they being smuggled uh, into these places? How are you know uh, criminal minds getting access to them? If we can cut off that line or at least reduce it substantially, I, I see a situation where uh, the attacks will de-escalate. A time ago, there was discussion about putting microchips in all cattle. And I believe this is my second point. Why don't we microchip every cow, every goat, every sheep, every camel uh, that is found in those regions, beginning with those regions and we can, you know, extend it into the whole country. Th this is important. Microchip technology and, and putting it in animals is not a new thing. Here in, on this channel, we are directly opposed to uh, uh, chipping of human beings. That one we say no. But as for animals, uh, we, we can microchip them and have a central database where the description, everything about the animal, the condition, the health, where it is kept, the owner, everything, uh, a, a, a digital ID sort of, with, with all the in important markers is maintained. And as after microchipping them, uh, having agreed, or, or obviously all this will have to work uh, or, or on certain regulations that have to be produced. It, it can't just be done randomly. And you can have uh, police with microchip readers uh, along strategic places en route from where the cattle are, are bred to the, final, to the final market. And even in the market, the slaughterhouses should have uh, you know, microchip readers uh, that are controlled by government so that as, a, as, as an animal is brought to them before it is slaughtered, it is, you know, checked that it is there legitimately, it's not stolen, anything like that. And, and I'm sure we can work with the community in, in northern Kenya for them to see, you know, to, to understand if, if your cow, if your animal is, is, is stolen, uh, how do you report? The, Kenya is, is, is fairly well covered uh, by mobile technology. Just a uh, you know, putting a report electronically, this could, you know, it, the information can reach the authorities and the animal can be prevented from leaving an immediate local area somewhere. Uh, of course, the problem will always be corruption. Uh, and that's a major issue in, in all sectors, health, education, you name it. Uh, corruption is a major issue. So as we deal with animals or whatever it else it is, we will need to address that, but that's not a, a topic for today. Then uh, one solution, one additional point that I have not had mentioned anywhere, and for me it is the elephant in the room. We need to now confront ourselves as Kenyans. It's time for us to put down traditional pastoral practices. They need to be banned. Yeah, this issue of uh, young men and even girls uh, at times following cattle in the streets uh, and, and now in northern Kenya, you know, the community uh, has determined traditional pastoralism to be the activity, the economic activity that they engage in. Uh, it's a lie of the devil. I at the time of our forefathers, Traditional pastoralism worked, but I bet you now, if our forefathers rose from the grave, they would not participate. They, they would be IT engineers and pilots and doctors, surgeons, eye surgeons and heart surgeons and brain surgeons. They would be laughing at us, asking, well, what is this you're engaging in? Why? Be because when, when they did pastoralism, the, the ground where they lived could take uh, that kind of uh, uh, economic activity uh, 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 and make it viable. They, they will get uh, economic return for it. Uh, they will get status. But now, look at the, the, the communities that insist on traditional pastoralism. Uh, and, and it's not, I, I'm not throwing mud 
on those activities. As I've told you, at the time of our forefathers, this was a viable activity. But now the government ought to wean our current modern day society out of that activity. We lie to ourselves. Yeah, for us to continue on, on you know, wanting to to follow cattle, and and these days is being done even on the street is a most unviable. Uh, it, it, I it, I challenge you, any of you who are listening to this video, do you envision yourself or your children following cows the way they do? It, it, we need to ban it. We need to ban by law. Yeah, we need to pass a law and not fear. We need to pass a law against some of these moran activities, right of passages. Let's keep them as part of of remembering where we came from, but not practice them. Society is demanding a new kind of of adaptation, and and when I say that, I say that carefully. That adaptation cannot uh, supersede the word of God. But when pastoralism uh, becomes as unviable as it is in northern Kenya, yeah, it, it is confining those communities to poverty, to lack. When a human being is reduced to surviving for the next meal, for a shuka, for a panga which he can, he can sharpen into a njora, a, a, a traditional sort of sword, for tire sleepers, a kala, that is such a wasted human being. And to do that only for a few tourist dollars and, and pictures with a few tourists here and there. What a travesty. Yeah? We, we should be having our community going to see, you know, going to preach in, in, in New York. Not, not posing with, a, with cattle and, and one or two mzungus here and there. And, and there's nothing wrong with posing, you know, with them. But uh, surely we, we are misusing ourselves and our children. So let the government ban traditional pastoralism. The question then begs, what, what do you do with, the, uh, with, with, with these pastoralist people who, who, want, who, who feel so attached to their cattle? Designate uh, official ranch lands. And in those ranch lands, bring all the support services, uh, whether it be veterinary, water, bring in security, and of course, link them to markets, legitimate markets. And let everyone who wants to, to, to do ranching uh, do it with modern scientific knowledge that lead, makes it more viable. In fact, uh, county governments could set up that and allow beginning with the local communities uh, people to invest yeah a, a kind of like like in the stock exchange yeah I, I personally i wouldn't mind putting in my few shillings and owning half a cow yeah o of course with others owning the other half so that it remains alive yeah and, and that it, it becomes viable so the community immediately then you know has money to do other development and and then their concern will move away from the violent hostilities that we are seeing now. Of course, as, as all these investments are being done, there must be requirements for cooperation, a sort of public, uh, you know, private partnership, some social cooperation with, with the communities. They must have, have be brought to accept this. Make sure all your children go to school where they can get knowledge, because not every child born in that community needs to be a pastoralist. We want doctors from there. We want astronauts from there. We want the, 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 the wealth of, 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 capa of capability and intelligence that God put in those children to contribute to Kenya and to the world. Yeah? So, so let's have that. Let's have even a, tr a, a transition period because already now there's youth who, who are out there in the bush with guns. Let, let them be brought in and instead of being faced with, you know, death sentences and imprisonment and threats, let's offer them some, some transitional training, maybe in, in technical colleges, maybe in the ranching, in veterinary, you know, in, in, in various activities.
that they are able to transition into and make you know a profitable living for themselves and for their communities yeah so they can be brought let, let's have that sort of partnership that yes uh, uh, as a government whether county or national we are going to invest in your areas like this but you on the other hand have to cooperate with us you you have to come in surrender your guns and cooperate there are various skills you can learn here uh, and we will support you maybe they will see how to to do the support for that uh, and so you become a you know a law abiding and and profitable citizens even to your own families yes then finally in, in tandem with all this good stuff beef up security yeah i know we've been getting told oh they are sending kdf gsu and and, and all this uh, i i think now is a time we looked at the operation of, of our security agencies yeah the, uh, we need to to update them can you imagine if the threat was hamas we, the, the, we would be finished by those terrorists by now for example i suggest now, now that the country you know the government seems to be you know taking loans left right and center why don't we take one or two you know a few drones that are capable of, of of proper surveillance and when i'm talking of drones i'm not talking about these private uh, gadgets that that we use to cover weddings i'm talking about military style drones yeah capable of surveillance from long distances capable of you know weapon deployment appropriate weapon deployment yeah we don't want them shooting missiles uh, but if, if they had one or two machine guns attached to them you know uh, the weapons experts will tell us yeah uh, that could be used to enforce the law of, of course then we need also to arrest the kingpins i, I understand big it's big business M most likely they are politicians from the region benefiting and providing cover as kingpins possibly they are the same who are importing smuggling the small arms into the region the, why haven't we seen any arrested and, and, and brought before court and even, you know, sentenced proper and serving a sentence? If, if the government is serious, you know, removing northern Kenya from being a war zone, why aren't any uh, kingpins arrested? Yeah, You want to tell us our intelligence is, uh, services, they are so incompetent, they don't know who this is. L let's have them arrested. Yeah let's have a decisive uh, military intervention I, I saw you know a, a, a tweet from the police services uh, the inspector general and and his team saying they know where the weapons are, are kept yeah i thought that was a most lame uh, excuse or is it a threat is is it a you know are you trying to i i, I couldn't understand yeah if you know why haven't you gone for them yeah people are still being shot it's it's time now that wearing combat uniform becomes something a bit more than a catwalk parade of officers let us see action